first time in 20 years, the draft will be in Nashville. Welcome into our draft show presented by Seneca Resorts and Casinos, alongside former second first round pick of the Buffalo Sabres back in 1995, Marty Baran and Brian Duff. I'm but still a little bitter about that. I know. Because and I didn't Jamie mean Key, to go there, but I Jamie had to Key go got there. the jersey with the one. He got all the good pictures, and then I got like slotted second, although it was just a few spots behind him. Well, this is the 20th anniversary of the first draft in Nashville. I was there. It was unreal how the Predators built their organization out from that draft in 2003. They had eight picks in the top 100 and ultimately built their defense core for the foreseeable future with Ryan Suter. Shea Weber and Kevin Klein, who played more than 600 NHL games. Now, back then, Buffalo scored pretty big at that draft as well. Thomas Vanek went fifth overall. No one has scored more goals in Sabres history since that point in time, and he ranks fifth in franchise history. Man, they can only hope to have that big a catch this time around. Yeah, and it doesn't always matter if you have a top five pick or if you right. don't. It's finding the right players for your organization. Obviously, the Nashville Predators were able to do that back in 2003. The Sabres got a really good one with Thomas Vanek, who had an impact with the team just a few years later, right? You don't have to think five, six years to develop some players. It only takes a couple of years, depending on where they're from and what their uh, development path was. And for Vanek, he had an impact right away. So the Hawks on January January, June the 28th, are going to take Connor Bedard first overall. That is uh, basically a certainty. It'll be the Hawks' first first overall selection when they took Pat Kane back in 2007. So what's the expectation or just general thought from you on them picking Bedard and the impact? What's interesting is when they did select Patrick Kane, they did win the lottery and they jumped, jumped us, the Philadelphia Flyers, because I joined the Flyers at the end of the 07 season, which we were last, and then Chicago picked Kane. We ended up picking James Van Riensdyk. So again, Chicago wins the lottery, jumps to one, and they're getting a player like Connor Bedard. Obviously, Bedard is a great shooter. Uh, everybody wants his shot, right? That's what everybody's measuring uh, their skill set to, uh, but he's been so ready and so prepared for that moment. He says all the right things, but he will have, again, an impact right away in his first year, in my opinion. This will be the seventh time the Sabres are selecting 13th overall in the draft. They've actually had some pretty good success here. Four of the six have gone on to play you know, more than 500 NHL games, and you look back to one of the first at this number was Larry Playfair, absolute franchise legend, still gives back to this community and this team today. 577 games played. Drew Stafford not far behind. In fact, they both ranked 22nd and 24th respectively in games played in franchise history. But a little nugget on the 13th pick. Arguably their best one was Philippe Boucher back in 1991. Now he ended up being part of the big Alexei Zhitnik trade, but Boucher would go on to play more than 700 games and win a Stanley Cup in his final year with the Pittsburgh Penguins in 2009. So he again, wore a pretty good number too, because he wore 43 for he, most of his career. Did. So he, I stole it from him. He was bit. he was part of that uh, incredible, unforgettable night when Dave Hannon scored in the fourth overtime. He actually scored Buffalo's only goal in Game Seven in that series against the Devils. All right, after consecutive years for the Sabres of making 11 picks, they are slated for eight picks over the two days in Nashville. It'll be 13th on day one. Couple of second rounders, uh, third on day two, and of course their own picks in rounds four through seven. But we're sitting here wondering what might they find at 13th overall? And thanks to the hardworking folks at NHL Central Scouting, a quick look at the top five skaters for both North America and international. It's Bedard, Fantilli, Smith, Wood, Leonard. Two of those five from the program on this side of the pond. And then you've got Carlson, Mitchkoff, Dvorsky, Shala, and Reinbacher representing the uh, high five from Europe. So we have three of our returning draft experts to guide us through which players they see as a potential fit for the Sabres. The Athletics, Scott Wheeler. Flow Hockey's Chris Peters on UConn's Matthew Wood. A very tall six foot four kid from UConn and Sabres fans are obviously familiar with a very tall six foot six player from UConn who's had success within the organization. I think they see what Tage Thompson has done. And there are a lot of parallels there between what Tage was coming into UConn and what Matthew Wood was coming into UConn, which is this long sort of winger. They both played center, they both can play the wing. And Wood has that shot. He's a shooter, he's a power play guy. That, those are his attributes. If he continues to develop at UConn as he has, that'll be great. I think the one thing he really needs to work on is his skating. That's probably the 
lone detractor in his game and then just trying to stay consistently competitive and hard to play against because he's got that frame and that strength. And then when you have that combined with the skill that he has, he's just, you know, he's got a lot of the, checks a lot of the boxes that you want for a top six forward. Well, with Matthew Wood, he exceeded expectations at UConn this year. The youngest player in Division I hockey, the only 2005 birth player in NCAA Division I this year. Soft hands with a great wrist shot. That's what everybody's talking about, and that is what we see on tape when we watch Matthew Wood. And approaching 6-4 already with 34 points in 35 games and leading his team as a freshman. He obviously had a big impact with Canada claiming bronze in the U18 as well. The national team development program has four skaters ranked in the North American top 10, and Sportsnet's Sam Cosentino believes that Buffalo should be looking at center Oliver Moore. You know, Oliver Moore is a really fascinating player. His ability to play at a high pace is what excites everybody. He might be the best or the fastest skater that this draft class has to offer, and when we see the NHL and just how fast the game is being played, he fits that mold. Maybe his head hasn't quite caught up to his feet yet. It's not necessarily that he doesn't have the hockey IQ, which some people might question. Uh, a work in progress right now for, uh, for Ollie Moore. Moore is the best skater in the draft. That's his calling card. He is a world-class skater. He's only 5'11", but despite being sort of on the quote-unquote smaller side, he's an extremely physically mature kid, an extremely strong kid, and then just a ton of talent as well. Well, with Oliver Moore, the one characteristic everybody's talking about is that he is a great athlete. Could play multiple sports at a professional level if he wanted to, obviously focus on hockey. Great speed, even saying that he is about as fast as maybe Connor McDavid or more like a Dylan Larkin type player. I think speed is definitely his best attribute. Moore is committed to the Gophers this fall. He was fourth in scoring at the program this last year behind Perot and Smith and Leonard had more than a point a game for the U.S. as they won gold at the U18s. Now 11th ranked in North America is Braden Yeager. He's the son of a goalie, but he's also scoring at nearly half a goal per game clip over his two plus seasons with Moose Jaw. Braden Yeager ha is, is a goal scoring talent. Now the question is going to be, is he going to be a center or a wing at the NHL level? You know, size is going to be a factor there. Um, you know, skating is fine. There's a, there's a couple of elements there that you might want to see a little bit more from him to be a center, especially off the puck play. But he's a gifted goal scorer. He's got a tremendous shot, and that's a big part of why he can score goals. But they're going to have to coax a little bit more out of him to get the most value, especially at 13 which you know you expect to get an impact player there. Braden Yeager absolutely has the tools to become one of those players. Well, I think anytime you can add goal scoring, and I think that's his uh, number one asset, but you're looking at a guy that possesses speed um, and, and a guy who can score goals. So I think those two elements fit in any lineup, but in particular, when you look at his age and you look at where Buffalo is and the way some of their players are stacked, those are two elements that, uh, that I think would work. With Braden Yeager, the goals have dropped off from his first year at Moose Jaw to his second, but what everybody's talking about is that he has an overall game, more of a two-way center, and has really been focusing on that all season long. Yeager finished the year really strong in his playoff series, especially the one against uh, Winnipeg and Matt Savoy. He had 10 points in his final six games. Now, the Sabres are already employing Dahlien, Samuelson, Power, Yoki Haru among the uh, blue liners that are 24 and under. They selected two defensemen in last year's draft, and Mats Lindgren and Sevalot Komarov, who they recently signed. Could they be looking for more in that area with their first round pick? Axel Sandine Pelika is on the minds of all our draft analysts. Sandine Pelika feels like a little bit of a foil. He's not that length guy. Uh, but offers uh, a little bit more dimension. He's 5'11", plays still a physical, very committed game on both ends of the ice, uh, but just gives them something else in their pool that they're kind of missing as a sort of 5'11", uh, potential sort of second pairing defenseman long term. Axel Sandin Pelika is probably one of the best defensemen in this draft. Very offensively talented, you know, he's, he's more of a puck mover. He's also a very mature player. He spent most of the season in the SHL his calm and his poise with the puck. You're talking about a guy that never seems to panic in any situation and while under pressure seems to make a lot of the right decisions, probably underrated defensively because that's not what people are looking at based on his size, but in terms of playing a puck moving, fast paced style of game where exits are so key, where entries are so key, he really fits the bill there. 
With Axel sending Pelica, what you're getting is an offensive defenseman that can walk the blue line left to right, right to left. Great instincts. Uh, need a little bit more strength. Not the biggest of guy, but very slippery and very quick. And a huge year with his junior club. Amazing under 18. Seems like a, a real possibility for the Sabres. And of course then, if you're thinking along those lines, you have to wonder about fellow Swedish defenseman Tom Willander. Tom Willander is probably one of the better defenders in this draft, and he's also one of the better skating defensemen. He's, a, he's got so many tools that are at his disposal at any time. While he doesn't put up big numbers, he does move pucks very well. He makes plays in tight, and then you know he just closes on, on players really quickly. He's got the length. Uh, he's not the size of an Owen Power or Rasmus Dahlin, but still a six foot one kid, a very strong athlete. He's committed to Boston University, so despite being Swedish, like Sandine Pelica, he's coming over, he's going to be playing on North American ice next year, he's going to be learning the college game. He's one of the very best skaters in the draft, I'm more of a two-way type than Sandine Pelica. He's a right-handed shot, but he can play the left side. He's played both uh, over the course of his career. With Tom Willander, he's a great skater and uses it really to defend extremely well. He's got great patience, great puck control, and he's moving up the draft board, which is something always interesting when you come to the draft. Marty, do you know where our good friend Craig Button from TSN has him on his draft well, board? Well, Butts, he's got great styles, loves Swedish defensemen, so I'm going to say top 10 probably. He has him at yeah, 8 okay. at last check, so yeah, very high potential for Tom Willander as well. Now. This is a very, very valid Sabres question right now. Based on what we saw from the team this past year and what we know the prospect pool to be, is there more value for the franchise right now taking this first round pick at 13 or in fact trading it? Thoughts now from our experts. I think given the strength of this draft and given what will be available at 13, a lot of the players that, that are gonna be there are going to be potential impact players. I think you keep the pick because you don't have a ton of holes right now. Now, if the right if the right thing comes along, you have to at least consider it, but I think you're still gonna land an impact prospect at 13. I think there's gonna be a lot of players that a lot of teams desire there, and I do think that's gonna be a really marketable pick. If that pick is gonna move, it would be more to being a part of a package to acquire something that's gonna help them as early as next year. And I do think that that, uh, will present itself uh, come draft day. I would likely hang on to it. They don't need to rush their process. They've developed a really strong pool here, one of the strongest pools of prospect in the NHL. Uh, I think this is an opportunity for them to add maybe that one thing to it, as especially on defense, if they go that route, to really round out the pool. If they're patient with this process that they're in, that there's going to be a payoff here in the next couple of years. Look, there's definitely need with the Sabres that yes. they could go and, and get somebody to plug in right away this year, right? And that's the thing. But for the 13th pick, you got to make sure that the deal is exactly what you want. If not, you got to go and pick them. Have you ever been a believer in trying to fill like an organizational need with like that one home run type pick? Or? Unless it's a top two, top three pick, like we saw last year in New Jersey go with Simon Nemitz, right? Sure. Because they had already got Nico Ischer and Jack Hughes and the fourth, so they went with the D. I don't think that you're picking with a need when you get to 13. In the second, third round, you may look at, okay, we've got a lot of forwards drafted, let's look at D, but right now, best player available at 13 is where you go. Biggest name um, organizationally on the amateur scouting side is Jerry Fortin. He's gonna join us later in our draft shows to give us a little more insight as to what happens behind the scenes, but more also the mechanics of it involving you know, analytics yeah. and in-person scouting, video scouting, all the rest of it. So stay tuned for that. But the other aspect that we know in our draft shows that has been consistent year over year over year is that there's only one local draft expert who can dive in successfully on every prospect pool conversation. That is Chris Baker from SabresProspects.com who's going to join us in our next episode to really take us through the best options that Buffalo will have on day two. He also has a great style. I'll say this, like, look, we get our suits on and everything and we feel pretty good and then Bakes comes in and he looks good wearing whatever. So I'm looking forward to see what he's got on. Stay tuned for that. It's our draft show presented by Seneca Resorts and Casinos.